Thank you for staying with us. The British government's plan to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda has finally been approved by Parliament, ending months-long deadlock between the lower and upper chambers over the legality of the policy. Under the new law, any asylum seeker who arrive illegally in Britain will be sent to Rwanda. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has pledged that the first flight will leave as early as July, promising a wave of deportations come what may over the summer. Tens of thousands of people have crossed the English Channel in small boats in recent years, many fleeing war and poverty. The government claims it aims to deter dangerous crossings in small boats and to smash people's smuggling networks. But rights groups have criticized the scheme, calling it inhumane and illegal, and say there is no evidence this policy will stop human trafficking or dangerous boat crossings. While Rwanda is often cited as one of the most stable countries in Africa, Many accused President Paul Kagame of ruling in a climate of fear and oppression. But joining us to discuss the legality and more with regards to this issue is UK Solicitor, Public Affairs Analyst, Ulufemi Aino. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Despite uh, several debates mm. that have happened mm. over about two years now with mm. regards to this matter, mm is finally seeming like it is going, Rishi Sunak has won, so to speak, because there, there are reports about this has opened the, the ways for legal battles to begin with regards to this matter. But talk to us, your interpretation of the step that uh, Rishi Sunak is taking, because he says he's trying to curb the inflow of illegal migrants, mm. if that will really curb it, mm. and the legal dimension to this matter. Yes, uh, well, first of all, it's a, it's a deja vu situation, mm. because we've been there before. There has been a series of attempts in the past to stop the flow of illegal migrants to the United Kingdom. And lo and behold, it didn't work. Why that this will work, time will tell, because time is a good weapon. And I'll tell you for a fact that, look, at a point, there was an outcry that people are risking their life going on this perilous journey mm, in, in order boats, to come to the boats, United yes. Kingdom. The next thing that happened is that we had the Dublin Convention. Mm. And what was the essence of that Dublin Convention is to prevent asylum seekers from moving from one safe country to another. So if you come to United Kingdom and the immigration officer interview you and they realize that you stay in Germany for two days before crossing over to Belgium, from Belgium to France, and then from France to UK, then under the Dublin Convention, they can send you back to Belgium or they can send you back to France because you cannot leave one safe European countries to move into another. That was what the Dublin Convention was all about. And it was just to prevent people from coming to the United Kingdom. At the end of the day, what happened? It didn't work. Then the government now came up with what they call a fast track policy. As a matter of fact, I even participated in that fast track. And what they did was to fast track the processing of asylum claim. Mm. So you have an immigration detention center. By Within that immigration detention center, there is a court next door. So when the immigration officers process your asylum claim and they refuse, they give you a right to appeal mm. within five days. Once you lodge that appeal, within the next five days or so, they put you on a fast track. There is a judge next door within <laughs> the prison. You go there. But the question is this. Does this deter the asylum seekers from coming to the United Kingdom? Look at this Rwanda bill, yes. which was passed on Monday. Yes. If you listen to the BBC and other media outlets, they even interview some of the asylum seekers who are presently in Calais in uh, France. Yeah. That, look, if you come to the United Kingdom, they are going to send you to Rwanda. And what was the arrest? One? They said, no, we will still come. And if you send us to Rwanda, we will come still back. find a way to, to come, come back. back. Now, so you see, you can see the determination. And now, as of Monday, they've started sending tests to some of the Iranian asylum seekers that, look, 
you are like we are likely to send you to Rwanda. And there are concerns that some of these persons will flee when they get that but, information. No, that is another issue. What was the security? What is the security arrangement in Rwanda that will help these people not to leave that country? Right. Take for instance. Now, once they get to Rwanda, they are going to lodge them in an hostel, which yeah. will cost about nineteen pounds yeah. for the first three months in order to process their claim. Yeah. Now, once they process your claim. And they come to the conclusion that you are entitled to asylum. Now, that's fine. You are not going to United Kingdom. You will stay in Rwanda for five years. Now, five years is enough period for people to integrate. Some will have children. Some are going to get intermarried, married, whatever. And you cannot restrict their movement at that point. In which case, they can still find another legal route in order to come to United Kingdom. And why Kiga, you see, Maybe this is not well thought out by the president of uh, Rwanda mm -hmm. himself, Paul Kigama also. Yeah, Paul now, Kigame. Uh, yes, thank you. In the sense that, you see, they are going to get about 150 million for this. That's what the wow. British government yes. is going to give them. Mm -hmm. And now, Kigali, they are very keen to have young men in their country because they are suffering from this uh, Jakpa syndrome too because most of the young people in the country, are, they, mm -hmm. they are now in Europe. But the, what they fail to consider is this. You see, international migration and international crime comes hand in hand. Mm. Take, for instance, some years ago, South Africa doesn't know anything called 419. Mm. It was when some citizens of another country started migrating to that country that the issue of uh, 419 and whatever. And you will still recall, if you cast your mind back, that some years back, you know, the America came to South Africa and picked quite a few Nigerians and said because they engaged in one criminal activities or the other. So, and another thing is this. When you open the border, people will come in. Some of them will come in with new ideas and new criminal intention. Look at what is happening in Europe now. Even this is well documented. Albanians, a lot of them are facing the courts in the United Kingdom. And judges have expressed concern that there are a lot of Albanians coming before us. Now, because you open the border, and honestly, if you read, <laughs> Albania has nothing to export to the world, apart from all these criminals who are traveling from one country to the other. And some of them have had a history of conviction here and there. And this Rwanda bill, let's go back to the court. Now, under the law relating to asylum or refugee is the 1950 convention. Mm. Now, under that convention, before you can claim asylum, you need to show that you have been persecuted in your, your country. Home country. Either because of your religion, because of your race, or because of membership of a social group or your uh, orientation. Mm. Now, there are other various elements into an asylum claim. Take, for instance, if you are in Nigeria and you want to go and apply for asylum in the UK, there are various elements mm. which you need to satisfy. One, there is something called internal flight alternative. Mm. Take, for instance, if my problem is with the Lagos state government and they are the one persecuting me, looking for me, is it not possible for me to escape to Chukotu and go and hide? Mm. So that they That's the issue now. That is the internal flight alternative. And also, you need to show also that the authorities in that country cannot offer you protection in any way or the other before you can even escape to go and apply for asylum in another country. Whether some of these asylum claimants will be able to cross that threshold it's another thing. Okay. But the, uh, yes. So uh, looking at all you've said, now it borders on border control and security. Now, how do you think the UK government can, can actually balance national security um, and border control concerns? Of course, looking at the humanitarian angle as well. Well, the humanitarian angle is there. But you see, this is a problem. Two years down the line, you know, this bill has been going back and yes, forth, back and forth yes. before it was finally passed. Mm. And what was the issue? Now, the upper house, which is the house of Lord, they said, look, are you, there are some Afghan citizens 
who assisted the British soldiers during the war in that area. Mm -hmm. And now, are you going to send these people to Rwanda, mm -hmm. despite their effort? Where is the humanitarian aspect? And what the minister is saying, which I do agree with, is that, look, there are other routes for those people to migrate because they assisted us during the war going on in that place. So that one is there. But when you are talking about national security, the national security, every country has the right to control the entry of aliens into their territory. Absolutely. That is what is in the international law. But when you sign into an international convention, you must abide by the spirit of that convention. The refugee convention, which most of these countries are signatories to, actually forbid them that people who come into your territory to seek sanctuary, you cannot send them to another country. So there, are case, now, there is a case now. No, there is a case. That is why the government even foresee that. And you said that in your intro, that, look, they emphasize that, don't forget, the flight will not take off until July, July yeah. anyway. But they emphasize there is going to be a lot of legal battles. battles here and there. And what they did, they've set up 125 judges to deal with all legal cases, cases coming. 25 courts have been set up to deal with anybody who wants to so challenge They are, they are trying to show that they are ready for they are, No, That is why the, uh, the prime minister even said that, no, there is no going back. Mm -hmm. We must stop the boat. And coincidentally, uh, unfortunately, even on Monday, when they passed this bill, about five asylum seekers who tried to cross from France to United Kingdom passed right. away because their dinghy collapsed. Mm -hmm. Now, what the government is trying to say is that, look, we know people are going to challenge this. 150 people are the first set of people who is going to live in July. That if they want to challenge, we have a special court, we have special judges, we are trying. And now, there's another thing in the bill that we even surprised you. In June 2023, the first flight was to take off to Rwanda. Seven but people. Was there just seven people where? No, no. I, I think it was about seven people or so. Yeah, seven. Yeah. But the European Court of Human Rights mm. now stepped in and granted an injunction right. that, no, that plane must not, because Rwanda is not even a safe Their country. Place. So, so they are also hoping that um, the European Court will come in again with regards to this before June. They have said that, but if you look at the new bill which has been passed, they've even put a clause there that even where there is an injunction, that does not mean that will not stop the flight. Right. Because, you see, what normally happens is that once they pick people and they want to deport them, some right at the entrance, before boarding the flight, they just say, I want asylum. Then you, you just need to, you have to remove them. Then there has been occasions in the past whereby, you know, judges in that country, they work all night. Mm -hmm. It's not like here. If anything can happen, overnight. You can call the judge, the judge grants an injunction and said, look, if the passenger is still on board, you must take them. If you have taken them out of the country, you must bring them back. But now, under this Rwanda, but that's not going to happen. So that means the government is even desperate to make sure this works. And you will see, this started when Boris Johnson was the yes, prime minister. Yes. That was in April 2002. Since then, successive Conservative Prime Minister, they are all in support of this bill, mm -hmm. up to Rishi Sunak, and he has made it happen. And there's going to be an election in autumn. Yeah. And if you are not careful, <clears throat> you see, issues relating to migrants is a political hot potato in some of these countries. Right. And if the government mm -hmm. fails to take action, it's going to affect and, the And because it's going to cost uh, about 540 million pounds of taxpayers' money. So, yeah. so the government needs to handle this as um, appropriately as it, as it can, because you mentioned that the election in autumn might, it might cause, uh, it's going to be a major debate for that election. It is. It is because how, how would it shift things or conversations around uh, that? It election? is going to shift because don't forget, even presently, most of the asylum seekers are, they are lodged in various hotels in the United Kingdom mm -hmm. and discussing the government 80 million a day. So what the government is saying, the alternative, don't forget, this money is coming from the public purse. Yeah. The indigenous population are very concerned yeah. that you are spending eight million a day housing all these asylum seekers. If we have an opportunity to remove majority of them to Rwanda, don't forget that would be a big saving in the long run. 
and right. in which case, that is part of the reason why the government is very desperate to make this work and said, look, and on the flip side, the indigenous population are also concerned yeah. about children being put on a dinghy to cross from uh, fr uh, France to United Kingdom on a daily basis. And they have to rescue some of these people. But, but they're also concerned about the human rights concerns in Rwanda as well. well because even the locals, where the host hostel where these persons uh, are going to be camped, uh, people around that locality are also questioning, where are the jobs? Yes. Where, where, how, are we, how are they going to integrate these people into the system? So it, it's neither here nor there for, it, for these it people. It is. And that was part of the reason the first challenge before this matter went back to parliament. That was why the Supreme Court in the UK said, look, this is, a, this is very unlawful. And what you see, sometimes there's always a conflict between the court and parliament. Right. Parliament will make a law and say, this is what we intend to do. The court will be there and shrug it down, say, no, you can't do that because it's unlawful. Then the next thing the government will do is to go back to parliament and make amendment. And some of the issues which you raised, that was why this bill was delayed. Because they said government must come up with a new treaty with Rwanda mm -hmm. to address most of these major concerns, which they have done. And another cause of the delay was because they said before you can remove people, there must be an independent person who must satisfy that country to be a safe country. Yeah. There was argument for and against yeah. that. Eventually, the bill has been passed. It's likely to receive royal assent to, today or this week, in which case the government said they are ready. They are going to use the ROAF uh, plane. They are not using commercial plane. So there are a lot of things they've yeah. set up. And they've trained about 500 people to work as an escort that we escort these people <laughs> to uh, the that's, that's quite a lot of uh, taxpayers' money being spent there. But looking at all of this, uh, do you think the UK is also concerned about its image on the global stage, even as it, as, as, as it affects um, human rights and refugee policy? Well, you need, to, you need to balance the two. Because if you are concerned about your image, at the same time, are you not concerned about children uh, traveling on a dinghy on a very, very winter day, and then the dinghy collapse, they have to spend money to rescue these people, accommodate them, you see? So we need to carry out a balancing exercise here. Yeah. Nobody is saying you can't control the entry of aliens into your ter ter territory. And there is an issue. Whether some of these people are genuine asylum seekers in the real sense of it, yes. or they are just what they call economic migrants. Mm. That is what. Because, number one, once you sit down with asylum seekers, the first question the officer will ask you, why are you seeking asylum? And then the moment you turn around and say, oh, in my country there is no job, I can't eat, I, things are very, very difficult. So you are not a, an asylum an seeker migrant. in the sense, you are an economic migrant. Mm. And once they classify you as an economic migrant, that is what they are saying, that look, you just have to leave. But the right to legal advice is another thing. If you take them to Rwanda, what efforts or what do you put in place for these people to have opportunity to seek legal advice? That is another thing. So because looking, looking yeah. also, there might be a spiraling effect. You think other European countries will take because you how take, successful, how successful or otherwise this would be well, might be a lesson don't, for other. Uh, don't forget, uh, this is the <laughs> it, that's another interesting aspect. Right. Australia, what they are doing now, Australia is doing it. Germany. Because uh -huh, other countries will follow suit. Mm -hmm. If it works, there is no doubt other countries will follow suit. Because what they are trying to do is to enter into partnership with other African countries that, look, some of this, we are overwhelmed with all these migrants. Can you take some? We will give you this. We will do this. And that is likely to happen. And if you listen to the argument from the... Uh, International Committee on Refugees, because they oppose this bill. True. That look, this is going to have a, a bank wagon effect, effect, where other countries are going to be shipping asylum seekers. Because don't forget, some of these people they've been through a terrible journey mm. to travel from Morocco to France, for getting sorry to Spain. Once they get to Spain, they are, some of them have been camping. If you go to the Calais, where yeah. they come, some of them have been there for three well, years, yes. and they are still looking for opportunity to enter the United Kingdom. Yeah. And there is something they even did at a point in order to control the flow of migrants. 
Under international law, it's called just a post immigration control, whereby here, if you know migrants are coming from Kenya into Nigeria, you can ask your immigration officer to go and work with the immigration officers in Kenya so that they stop people migrating. And you see that sometimes when you want to board a flight, yeah. you will see somebody looking, looking at, at your, your passport, passport yeah. in, uh, uh, turning it here As and here. Because some, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the just post because mm -hmm. most of them are immigration officers. They've been posted here because we don't want people using dodgy passport leaving Nigeria to our country. So they tried that, but that didn't work because if you, uh, if you take the train from France, you will see immigration officers sp uh, spot checking people. But from your Nigeria. perspective, is there a humane and orderly immigration system that can be delivered by the UK as against um, deporting these people to Rwanda? Or mm. What would you suggest that the UK does? Well, the point is this. You see, um, there are quite a few people that will spoil everything for others. Mm -hmm. There are some genuine asylum seekers in Absolutely. the sense of it. And I can tell you, when the war was going on in Syria alone, or this problem in Liberia, you've seen people even claiming to be national of that country, mm -hmm. whereas they are not, in order to enhance the chances of them being granted asylum. But the only way... You see, our, any asylum policy must have a human face. Mm. It must have a human face in the sense that when people have been persecuted in their own country and they escape to their country, you must create that safe environment where they will be listened to. You must train your officers to know that they need to consider all the application with the necessary compassion, have regard to international and domestic law. Mm. That is the one that can only work. But this idea, not at my back, that we are going to just, you, once you come in, we put you in the next available flight. I don't think that's the right way to go. Mm. Okay, so what can be, like she asked about what can be done, quite all right, but this is a huge concern now. Um, is there a way that UK can work with other countries to ensure that this is nipped in the butt from the beginning? Yes, I, 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 yes, I take your point. Because they've tried this before. Now, Romania is part of the European Union now. But before the accession, what actually happened is that they realized there are a lot of Romanian gypsies who are coming to the United Kingdom. And what the government did, they went to that country, they put adverts on television that don't come. Because if you come, we are going to detain you, we are going to do this, we are going to do that. What happened in the end? It didn't work. Mm. Then, but that is over now because they are now part of Europe, so it's not uh -huh. a pro it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So even if they partner with all these countries, first of all, you need to identify why are people migrating from this part of the world. Important er Eritrea, Sudan, and other countries, Iran, Libya. everything, the mm -hmm. Libya. What is the problem? Human because there is issues. no, there are a lot of human rights issues. Mm -hmm. There is no stability. The government there is not even stable. Corruption is another thing at the end of the day. When Abasha was there, almost every Nigerian applied for asylum. When uh, Karun Sarowiwa was uh, agitating for Mosop, Adle, can you see Nigerian asylum? He will not say he's a member of uh, Mosop. Okay, but now the president here, now in fairness to him, is not persecuting anybody. Now, Although there might be some people, maybe Yaya Bele or so, who will say, oh, look, uh, they are persecuting okay. now, me. Now, you are going political. <laughs> okay, 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 let's come back. Let's come back. Let's leave the politics about it. But that's what he's been saying. That, uh, we, so, you, you get me? So, because of that, but what they should do, go back to your question, is that either go back to the, that, those countries, identify what are the main problems that is making people to migrate. To Work with the mm. government in that country and to make sure you give them the necessary support so that people, and educate their people that, look, this is not the end. If you come, we won't give you asylum. This is what is going to happen. And once you have the stability, once the economic situation in that country is stable, there is a possibility people will not be risking their life to travel so, so, to so the Sahara. So you, you are confident that this bill has come to stay, as in it will stay the cause as it is? Well, the, well, the, the government is determined to make sure that it works. Don't forget, they've spent a lot of money on this, not to talk of the legal challenges here and there. 
a lot of money has been spent. The people in look that hotel for the last one year has been there and yes. it's empty. Yes, because they had to move me? people out. Exactly. And now the Rwanda, uh, the Rwanda government is even telling them that don't bring them yet. Bring them later in June or July because we want to make sure we we pro we have a, the right procedure in place. Then we can take more. Thereafter. Do you think the Rwandan government has the capacity to accommodate them? There will be a lot of them that will be moved if this... Uh, well, the, the, first, the first to be moved for the, is 150. Uh -huh. Then the next one 100. will be 200. Then so, we see, so, so we so see how it goes so there. In about two years, we should be seeing about maybe 1,000. There, there's a possibility Rwanda. it's going to be more than that. But what they are trying to do is that if it works, Definitely, there is no doubt they will still give them a lot of support. Because don't forget, the government in the United Kingdom is going to save a lot of money. If they are going to pay a lot of money. To... And they are still going to pay a lot. lot it even pays them. They, 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 are, they are even better off paying Rwanda to keep these people than and keeping them. them because yes. they are spending $8 million a day in lodging them in accommodation. And there's a conflict between the indigenous population and some of the asylum seekers. And also the indigenous population are concerned about asylum seekers committing crime here and there. You know what is yes. going on in Germany, mm -hmm. whereby some of them have been held to be responsible. And then with what is going on in the global world about terrorism, too, they are still concerned that some Al-Qaeda and others might just bring some of these people in who with disguise as asylum seekers whereby some of them are just coming to perpetrate one if we act or the other. So there are lots in the menu. Yeah, there's a lot in the menu. And again, <laughs> if, the, if this works, some African countries might begin to say, you know what, bring them to <laughs> Don't us. Bring them, <laughs> Let's see what bring them to us as it is. Yes. Uh, we have to leave this conversation here now. So much has been said, but we must thank you. Uh, UK Solicitor, Public Affairs Analyst, Olufemi Aino, for your time yes, on the thank program. You. Thank you, thank for you all the time. so much. Yeah. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll bring you news update. Stay with us. <laughs>